We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? You know, it's it's a uh, it's been an eventful week on the recruiting front at Ohio State. Uh, some <laughs> good, yeah, some good. By the way, some good, some bad, but also some good. So, we, so, so the so the the sky isn't falling, Jared. Sky's not falling. Uh, I mean, like to jump right into it, losing Rayola is is bad. That's the guy that Ohio State wanted. That's the guy Ohio State got. Now they don't got him anymore. Forgive the. I'm just trying to roll with the with the don'ts. Forgive the uh, grammar, mm-hmm. but yeah, it, it and it sucks. Like, and there there's no amount of, you know, to steal a steal a phrase from the kids. Anything to to say to try and downplay this would be would be nothing but copium. That's it. This is the guy they wanted. They didn't get him. They had him. They don't have him anymore. End yeah, of the story. Def- yeah, definitely sucks. It definitely does. But Jared, it, it's better to have that now than this time next year. One hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, because then you're in an Emory Jones situation. You know, Emory Jones was committed to Ohio State for a very long time. And then at the end of his recruitment, he's flirting with Bama. um, And he was basically just openly, you know, with Alabama, just like he was he he was basically decommitted without decommitting. Right. Which is why you Mm -hmm. see the which is why you see the, you know, decommitment recommitment so rare because they typically don't decommit unless they know they aren't going to go to that school anymore. Right. It happens, but it's rare. Um, And so Emory Jones was trying to play Ohio state against Alabama. Bama's trying or yeah. And Emory Jones was trying to play Bama against Ohio state, Ohio state against Bama. And both of those schools just said, screw it. And they went and Ohio state got Devin Brown, not Devin Brown. Um, I, I've up and forgotten the kid's name. He ended up transferring to TCU. He never played at Ohio State. He was a Texas kid. I forget his name. Um, anyone in the chat know, the, remember his name? I can't remember his name. Um, Matt Baldwin. Gangland on point. Um, and, I, and I don't remember who Bam ended up picking up instead. So then Emory Jones was out both and then ends up going to Florida. Regardless, you know, you're you're left scrambling and you get Matt Baldwin. I think Bama took a guy named Tua. Was that that wasn't the same year, was it? I think they because Tua they got right away. Tua was like one of the best quarterbacks in the country that year. I don't think they passed on Emory Jones and settled for Tua. Uh I mean, because you know, no offense to Matt Baldwin, but Ohio State passed on Emory Jones and settled for Matt Baldwin, right? Um Anyway, point is, is that you can be less scrambling at the end of the year, or you can have a whole year to figure it out still. And Ohio State has a whole year to figure it out still. Um, a couple, a couple things to note here. Emory, well, okay. Zach says Emory pass. Uh, Emory passes. I, I assume you mean passing was a good thing. Um. You don't know. Like I know Emory Jones's career at at Florida and then Arizona State, and now he's back in the portal. Um, didn't go the way Emory Jones thought it would go. And I tell you what, I'm surprised. I, I saw Emory Jones at a Friday night lights camp back in I think 2017 or something like that. And he was there with Danny Clark, who is you know, a whole other story we won't go into, but he was committed to Ohio state at the time. And also there was Tate Martell. Emory Jones looked, I think by far the best of those three guys. Now, the other two guys, his careers also didn't really pan out the way everyone else wanted them to. Um, 
But he had he had he played under or with Ryan Day, then maybe things, you know, he develops differently, perhaps. Perhaps he doesn't. Um, Ryan Day is great with quarterbacks, but also Tathan didn't make it. You know what I mean? So you, you <laughs> never know. Uh, his arm was a little better than, uh, yeah, it, it was. I mean, Ryan Day made JT look elite for a quarter. That's that's fair. Yeah. So, All right. So the big question: Why, Jared? Why? Why? Why did he decommit, and why now? Yeah. Um. We first, first and foremost, we don't know. And okay. Uh, Zach right out the right out the door is going to lay it on the line and say money no it's not money NIL is just everyone's boogeyman right now anytime Mm -hmm. anything doesn't go wrong we can just blame NIL yada 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 I am being told that this has nothing to do with money nothing to do with money um Rayola does come from a, a well-to-do family, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Uh, so does um, so does Quinn Ewers, right? Um, having money doesn't mean you don't want more money. I think we can point to a whole lot of examples for that. But uh, I'm being told this has nothing to do with money. Uh, let's just blame Zach Smith. I'm okay with that. Um, but by the way. And I'm not, I'm not, this is just a segue for me. I'm not, I'm not putting everything on Zach Smith by any means, or maybe anything on Zach Smith. That's nothing to do with Zach Smith. Just tossing this out there. And again, we don't know. We don't know anything about why he committed for sure yet. A lot of speculation. We don't know anything for sure. But if you are Dylan Rayola, And all you see from all the Twitter people who you follow who are related to Ohio State bitching about how Ryan Day should be fired and make no mistake, he's coming to Ohio State to play for Ryan Day. But all you see are people calling for Ryan Day's job and all you see are people whining and complaining about NIL and how Ohio State's behind on NIL and Ohio State can't do this and Ohio State can't do that and the coach is going to get fired and everyone hates the athletic director all of a sudden. You think that contributes? You think that factors into the brain of a teenager hanging out on Twitter? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it does. I'm not saying it's related. Because I don't know. But I'm just saying, be careful what you say publicly. Because the kids are also on Twitter. And if you're out there saying, Ohio State can't pay their players because NIL's broken. Well... Be careful who sees those tweets, because one, it's not true. NIL is not broken at Ohio State, and if it is broken at Ohio State, you can blame strictly the foundations. Let me put an S on the end of that. The foundations in charge of the NIL, not the athletic director. Anyway, that's a side note. That's, that was a tangent. Um, so, no, it's not. <laughs> Gangland will say it. It is not. NIL, and it is not Lincoln uh, Kineholtz. I know I saw a lot of people trying because okay, the timing, like it was timing, right? They Ohio State yep. locked up a 2023 kid, and less than a week later, the 2024 kid, adiosis. Stop. You realize Ohio State had a different 2023 quarterback in the class only a few weeks ago, right? Are you are you saying? Are you saying that he's afraid of competition from a, you know? And, and listen, I, I I hope Kineholtz comes here and is amazing. Recruiting rankings and recruiting stars are not almighty. But do you really think, um, uh, yeah, if he got offended by a 23 quarterback, I don't want him. Yeah. 
Listen, I, I like, but he's not from a what we you know from recruiting scores and whatnot. This kid's not on Rayola's level. Now, that's not to say that he won't turn out to be better or just as good or almost as good. We can only really go by recruiting rankings at this point, and one of those things is not like the other. Um, yep. Who's the 24 number one kid we were looking at? You think we got a sh shot to solidify? Well, the number one kid... Oh, 25. Yeah, okay. Do you mean 25? We'll get to that later. Well, you know what? Let's slow down. We're going to talk about where Ohio State goes next, and we'll talk about the 2025 quarterback. We'll, 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 we'll get there. Let's pump the brakes a tad. Um, so why, why is he leaving? If it's not an AL and it's not a 2023 quarterback, um, why is he leaving? Well, let me first say this. Um, and and I'm, this is from Mark Givler over at the huddle at Buckeye huddle. Um, Ohio State was totally blindsided by this. Ohio State was totally blindsided by this. They they weren't expecting this. They did not know this was coming. Total surprise at the Woody that this happened. Now, again, like they they saw some of the social media stuff that that we saw. You know, scrubs the account of Ohio State references, deletes the commitment post. So I'm just saying, like, starting at that point, they were blindsided. Obviously, they saw the same stuff we saw, right? Um, now, why? Kyle, do you have any theories as to why? I mean, anytime, anytime, especially this this time of the year, Jared, coaching changes, um, maybe maybe some other commits or decommits happen, transfer portals, a lot, lot of things that could happen here, though. But but from our guests, Jared, I mean, they they got a new – there's a new coach in, a, in another Big Ten team that um, might, that might um, be of interest here, and that would be uh, his uncle, yeah. who's now coaching over at Nebraska. Donovan Rayola, uh, brought in by Matt Rule. Um, but yeah, that's his uncle. Uh, his it's they're in Nebraska family. Um, uh, his dad played for Nebraska. His uncle is now an assistant coach. Um, he's the offensive line coach at Nebraska. Um, that being said, and I, and I said that I said that, uh, I mistakenly said that Matt Rule brought in uh, Donovan Rayola. That's not true. Ray, uh, Donovan Rayola uh, was started on the staff last year. But does does the lore of Matt Rule really change this equation that much? His uncle was already there. Matt Rule's an NFL coach who, who also has college experience as well not just not exclusively an nfl coach his dad isn't any more graduated from nebraska than he was last week his uncle isn't any more employed by nebraska than he was last week or you know by that a year ago a year ago when rayola originally committed to ohio state Matt Rule is the is the change here. And is is Matt Rule that big of an attraction for Rayola? And I guess I <laughs> it doesn't seem like it up front, but he, you never know. You re you really don't. I'm this is like the and and I do think this is what happened for what it's worth. Um, Matt Rule, um, I mean, family history, maybe, but the history is already there, Gangalan. Family traditions, but the family traditions were already there. Now, I, for the record, I do think he's going to Nebraska. I think Matt Rule made that fairly obvious on Twitter. He did a bit of a sub posting after a sub tweeting after uh, Rayola 
announced his decommitment. Um, yeah, but Frost was bad as a play caller. This is true. So maybe it's not even so much that Matt Rule was that attractive as Frost was that unattractive. And I think that's a very legitimate point, Gangland. Mm. Rule actually had a decent year or two at Baylor. He did. He absolutely did. But I'm just saying, what else? It's just, it feels like a really big change happened when I don't see that big of a change actually happening. Does that make sense? It feels like things flipped on a dime. And there's a lot of reasons why he could have chosen Nebraska a year ago, but things really feel like they flipped on a dime in, like I said, just a, just a week or in the past couple of weeks. Yeah. All right. Well, well, now that Hase has to start looking on uh, from, from Dylan here, what, what to Ohio State's options from now? So uh, there's Colin uh, Hurley. Uh, Unless the situation that they are saying, well, we will let you have everything you want. I think Ohio State was readying themselves to start Rayola as a freshman anyway. Um, I kind of saw it as. Anyway, doesn't matter. It's not happening. He's gone. Um, so right, let's, let's, some, let's, what are some who, other options here? Colin Hurley. Uh, he's currently committed to LSU. Um, he's from the Jacksonville, Florida era area. Uh, he goes to Trinity Christian. Um, I, I think this is a very legitimate landing spot for Ohio state. Kyle tossing his picture down there in the show notes. Um, number 25 rated quarterback. Um, according to 24 seven sports, but the composite is much kinder um, placing him as the 11th rated quarterback and one thirty second overall player in the country. Um, he is an option. Absolutely. Now the second option I think is a little more interesting. Um, you have Jaden Davis. And what is interesting about Jaden Davis is that he is the only other quarterback in the 2024 class to hold an Ohio State offer. Um, he is a 15th overall player in the country and the second ranked quarterback. Uh, he's out of Charlotte, North Carolina, most specific or more specifically uh, Providence Day. Um Ohio State offered Rayola and they offered Jaden Davis early on. If you go find some like old episodes of this show, um, some old recruiting episodes where we would be like, hey, introducing the 2024 class. I was probably hyping up Jaden Davis more than I was hyping up Rayola because I thought this was Ohio State's guy. Yes, Kyle, that is an issue. Um. Michigan is very much in the lead for Jaden Davis right now. The reason for that, though, Jared, is what he's done pretty much all this fall, and that's making uh, a lot of visits to Michigan, unofficial visits to Michigan here three times um, uh, this, yeah, at the end of this year, from July to September to October, he's he's made three visits unofficial visits there. Yeah. Um, and then by the way, he's again, I'll, I'll, I know I already said this, but he's, he's, he lives in North Carolina. That's, it's not like he lives in Detroit. Making a bunch of unofficial visits to, you know, to Michigan isn't necessarily easy, but this Ohio state went into the 2024 class, looking at two quarterbacks Jaden Davis was one of them. He's not committed to Michigan, um, but all signs have been pointing for a while that would send him to Michigan. Mm -hmm. Is it too late? 
Is he so Michigan that the idea of going to Ohio State now turns his stomach? D- did he feel left over or passed over when Ohio State decided to take Rayola instead of him? Or did or does Dylan or did Dylan Rayola simply decide he wanted to commit? And of course, Ohio State was only going to take one of them. Like. But if you kept lines of communication open and and that's a good question, did they? He went that way because we had Rayola. Maybe. I mean, I mean, he could be. Ohio State, I mean, obviously, like, Ohio State was no longer an option. Ohio State offered both of these guys, and Rayola was the one that committed. Is basically the story I have. Ohio State would have been happy with either one. Maybe they preferred Rayola. Maybe they didn't. Uh, But one of them was ready to commit, and one of them wasn't. So hopefully he doesn't feel, like, passed over or... He doesn't feel like a second place prize or anything like that, because I don't think it's the case. I think if the if the options were flipped and. And um, Davis was ready to commit and Rayola wasn't, I think Ohio State would have taken the commitment from Jaden Davis. But Ohio State has has a lot of work to do if they want to. What feels like flip him for Michigan because that's what it does feel like right now even though he's not actually committed yet yeah interesting to watch all right um you have you have a, you have a few other names here maybe uh less likely here uh so for, first off you have here uh already a, a commit to florida uh dj lagway yeah um i th- these guys are less likely for one reason or another um yeah uh dj's from willis texas uh more highly rated than hurley not as highly rated as Jaden davis uh or rayola obviously uh but i i think a a possibility uh that i think you know so ohio state will take a look here ohio state will take a look here i guess is all i'm really trying to say yeah uh, another one here is elijah brown um kid out of california I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some some Ohio State fans that's like, don't get to know the kid out of California and blah blah. Well, oh, those blah, people blah. are dumb. I I'll agree. say it. I agree. Um, the other the other one you have the other one you have here uh, as a um, less likely here is a uh, is a uh, great great name for a quarterback. Uh, it Air is Nolan. You almost want to <laughs> sign him just because his name's Air and he plays quarterback. Is that good yeah, enough? Yeah. yeah, I think it is. I think that I think it is. I think you offer him right now for that for that reason yeah. and that reason alone. <laughs> yeah, um, so there, there's there's five, na- I five guess, names. Yeah, there's there's five names there to kind of keep an eye out for. And yeah, well, there's still a lot, still a lot of time here. I mean, you still got a, another year to <laughs> to try to uh sway people and and all, and get get them to come on campus. So yeah, yeah, we'll see. In other recruiting news, Kyle, this is the good news In part. Other, we, this was the bad yes. news. Uh, Dylan Rayola, that was the bad news part. Let's do the good news part. Yes, absolutely. We will start with uh, the number two, the number two um, prospect in the 2024 class. And that is Jeremiah Smith commits yeah. to Ohio state. Yeah. Uh, one of two wide receiver targets um, from the uh, Madonna prep high school in Florida might be bringing the other one too. You don't know, but this is a uh, certified dude as gangland says. Um, this is a huge pickup for Ohio State. Top five player in the country. Uh, it's it's enormous. Yeah. Brian Hartline needs a 5X raise. I agree. I mean, he's... I, no, nothing's been said yet, but I do expect him to become at least a co-offensive coordinator here soon. Um, so, 
uh, you know, he'll get a raise with that. He'll get a raise with that. Don't you worry. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, another news here, uh, if we're jumping a, a year later, uh, talking about quarterbacks here, Ohio State offers, makes an offer to Bryce Underwood, um, kid out of uh, Michigan here. Yeah, uh, Bryce Underwood is one of the best players in the 2025 class. Kyle, do you feel old yet? The 2025 class. I'm 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 just going to choose to ignore it, Jared. We're just we're just moving on. <laughs> Whew. Okay, I'm I'm going to need a second. We have you a think shot? we got a yeah. shot? Yeah, absolutely. Ohio of State's going to have the best. Ohio State's going to have a shot at the best defensive ends, best quarterbacks, and best wide receivers in the country. Yes, and as Gangland points out, he loved the visit. I mean, like, they almost always love the visit. Uh, kids this age, when they get on the phone with, like, a, a reporter who does recruiting, they lo- they, they, they want to, like, they, they want to be a good interview, and they, they want, like, approval. So they'll always tell you it's a good interview. Um, kids these days. No, that, those are kids all the time. Those, that's how kids have always been. The young kid, a younger kid is going to like going to want to tell the reporter on the other end of the phone what they want to hear Mm because they're very like seeking of approval. Right. Um, Yep. That's just how kids are. But yeah, I I, yeah. So, yeah, it's a great visit. Everything's great. He's, of course, going to sign tomorrow. I'm kidding. Um, But yeah, no, Ohio State's in in great shape here. Uh, He's a 2025 quarterback. So. Like, even if he actually did, like, jokes aside, sign tomorrow, what does that actually mean? <laughs> Given what we talked about during the first part of this show, what would it actually mean if he did commit? Um, the good news is, is that it's now a lot more attractive for Bryce Underwood to come to Ohio State. Yeah. So if you're, if you're, yep. if you're looking like Bryson Rogers signed early. Yeah. Yes, he did. Uh, can schools make kids sign NLI national letter of intent? I almost wanted to read that as NIL just because that's how stuff is, but no, this is an NLI letter when they commit. Um, no, no, they cannot. Um, you either sign on national signing day um, or you can enroll in school. And that whole. So if you enroll in school, then it's kind of a done deal, right? Like you see mm-hmm. with Bryson Rogers, that's you would actually have to enroll to do that. Uh, Zach, don't, don't play the, don't play the, do they even commit any more shits? Just why it, it, it has, this has always been this way for as long as I've been covering recruiting, it has always been this way. Of course, NIL is a new factor in it, but if we're being honest, all this NIL stuff is the same shit that's always happened. Just slightly more above the table now. Slightly. Slightly more above the table now. Do, y- do y'all not remember Hugh Freeze at Ole Miss? Well, it's it's not legal because places are essentially guaranteeing NIL deals to players who aren't committed yet. That's not legal. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's at least closer to legal since they are just paying players. Um McDonald's bags to bank accounts. Yeah. Like, again, remember when Ole Miss sucked and then all of a sudden started signing top five classes out of nowhere? Yep. And then, oh my God, it turns out that they were cheating. And like Kyle and I called that modern day SMU. Yeah. You, you, you cannot play the, these kids these days card. Just look at SMU. 
All right, let's let's. And yet let's we got in trouble for. Some... Hold on, hold on. I I I I cannot let this go. And yet we got in trouble for tattoos. No. Ohio State did not get in trouble for tattoos. Ohio State got in trouble because Jim Tressel covered it up. Because Jim Tressel lied. It's the cover up, not the crime. Had Ohio State been honest about it, Because the feds contacted him. Oh, nobody. Oh, nobody. He contacted the feds. Or no, no, you're right. But but the fed who contacted him was, I believe, like a former player or someone looking out for him. But they did it over email. You remember when people thought you could just say shit over email and no one would ever find out? That's a lot less true nowadays. Has it ever has it ever been not true? Because <laughs> even 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 back then, even like in that 2000, I still knew everything. So you're an IT person, track. Kyle. You you're an IT person, and Jim Tressel was in his 60s at the time. 50s, late 50s, 60s, I think. There there's a difference there, Kyle. All right. 58, Zach says. All right, let's. All right, let's move on to the transfer portal then, Jared. Moving on from um, just recruiting news, let's let's go to see some uh, transfer portal updates here. Where would you like to start? Um, I have one, two, three. What the heck did I do there? Oh, I see what I did there. I see what I did there. That's better. I have one, two, three, four, five new names and an update on an existing player. An update on an exist right. or a uh, when I say existing player, an update on a player who I mentioned the last time we talked about the transfer portal. Okay. We we uh, introduced a bunch of names via the transfer portal um, the last time we did a building blocks episode. Um, was that just last week, Kyle, or was that two weeks ago? I don't remember. It's fine. Yeah, it we move awesome. forward. Okay. Um, but yeah, we talked about uh, some transfer portal options. Uh, one of the guys who I had a lot of interest in and really wanted Ohio State to pursue was uh, Fentrell Cypress. Uh, we do now know that there is strong mutual interest. There has been communication. He has not visited Ohio State yet. But this is a day one starter. Uh, the the bad news is the bad news is here. He is a graduate transfer. I believe he only has one year of eligibility left. So he is, you know, very literally a, a one year solution. So but that's that's one year. That's one year that you. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't care. I don't care if it's one year or three years. It's yeah. Well, it's it's a, it's a start. It's a it's a starter that you just plug and play. Yeah. And he's instantly a starter. Just just so we're clear, he's either the CB1 or CB2 instantly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, again, there's strong mutual interest there. I just know there's guys like Denver Harris out there who have like three years of eligibility left. Um, who is in uh he's also incredibly talented. Um but there's there's issues there that we won't get into. I don't think Ohio State, let's get both. I don't think that'll happen. Um, there, there's off the field issues there, uh, that I'm not going, I don't know enough about to comment on, so I won't, but there, there might be issues there. Um, the, the factual statement I can give you is he was suspended the last four games of the season. I believe it was the last four games of the season. Um, we need to get dirty bringing in a talks. Texas A&M thought they could play dirty and you saw what happened to that locker room, that team and what is now happening to them in the transfer portal. Just remember the video of him driving in the parking garage. Yeah, that also happened. Yep. All right. Um, All right well, so he's well rested. Think, Spike says. I think, I think one position that Hostick really needs to really look at is the offensive line here losing a lot of talent here 
yeah. Ohio State's going to go heavy into the transfer portal for offensive linemen. Yeah, uh, there is a chance Ohio State attempts to pull two offensive tackles out of the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. um, it is where they have struggled the most in recruiting in recent years. They had to change their offensive line coach strictly for that reason. Um, and Ohio State agrees like they are aggressively like they they wrenched, they reached out to Fent Fentrell Cypress. Of course they did. And they did so apparently right away from from what I understand. So, of course, they did. But um, they have been aggressively pursuing offensive tackles like multiple. Um, mm. One name I'm going to toss out there uh, because he was a focal point in our recruiting episodes last year uh, is Kenyatta Goodwin. Uh, Kenyatta Goodwin was a guy that Ohio state was down to the wire with from a recruiting standpoint. Um, he's from Indiana. Whenever there's a incredibly talented player, a high four-star player out of Indiana, almost feels like Ohio state's birthright at that point. And Ohio state was involved, but he ends up going to Kentucky. Um, so when his name hits the portal, of course, I, and a lot of other people immediately just got a little bit excited. Like, oh, yeah. we get a second shot at Goodwin. You get a second shot at Goodwin. All right, let's see what happens. That's Absolutely. apparently not going to happen. Um, I guess uh, he, things fell out hard between him and Ohio State when he ended up. I don't know if this was before he committed to Kentucky or the exact timing of it. Uh, but apparently there was a hard fallout here. So probably not going to happen for what it's worth. Probably not going to happen. So there's, uh, we'll just leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. All right. All right. Then who, who else then Jared, who else is out there? Uh, one name I feel really, really good about from an offensive tackle standpoint is a Johnny Cornelius. Um, he is from Kyle. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Rhode Island. Kyle. Not, 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 not too often you, you see uh, prospects out of Rhode Island here. Kyle, just so we're clear, he's from New York. He's transferring from Rhode Island. That's who he plays for. Mm -hmm. Kyle, what is the name? What is, what is the mascot of Rhode Island? I, I already know Jared. So you suck. Oh, okay. Guys in the chat, guys in the chat who can tell me the name and don't Google it. Who can tell me the nickname of Rhode Island? Oh, Tucker Patriot. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yes. University of Rhode Island. Anyone, anyone? The wicked pisses. The sailors, <laughs> Kyle, you want to tell them? Rams. They are the Rams. The sailor hats. <laughs> Gangland, that's a that's a call back to a Sloop Cats only episode. I'd love to follow that along with you, but that joke would only be for us. Um, <laughs> yeah, they are the Rams. Uh, if, you, if you're trying to visualize it, they have like the. Uh, they're back in Los Angeles. I had to think about it for a second. Los Angeles Rams helmet, but they're essentially wearing Titans colors. So imagine if the Rams, the LA Rams, wore the Titans colors. Now you can picture what Rhode Island looks like. Congratulations. Yeah. Right. Uh, apparently there's mutual interest here. Apparently there, he either has visited or there are plans to visit. I forget uh, the exact yeah, details on that. He has not visited not yet. yet. Okay. But there are plans to visit. Um, and this is a, this is a guy I feel really good about. Um, he is only a sophomore who visited then. Well, the, the 25 quarterback did visit. Yes. 315 sounds like a good solid brick wall because one of the tackles did. Um, hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, 
Right now, we're still talking about uh, a Johnny Cornelius, which is a name for the record. I looked up how to pronounce before we started. It is a Johnny, a Johnny Cornelius. Uh, he does have two years of eligibility uh, re remaining. Um, he played in 2020 as a freshman um, or well, I don't. Yeah, he, he kind of played in 2020 as a freshman. Of course, 2020 doesn't count. Then he started all 11 games as a red shirt freshman. Um, and his accolades in 2022 are uh, too many to mention. Mm -hmm. All right. What what are what are some other tackles then, Jared? Because you, you got you got a few more here. You got a few more here. This is the other name I feel really, really good about. I start, we started with three names I feel really good about, but then we did do like a, a quick aside on Kenyatta Goodwin. So I, these are kind of in order. I just wanted to throw out Kenyatta Goodwin right away because I know people would be wondering. Uh, Jeremiah Byers. Uh, he is from UTEP. Uh, he was a freshman in 2019. 2020 doesn't count. Um, and apparently 2019 didn't even count. I don't think he played enough games. So he is transferring with three years of eligibility remaining. Only, only 2021 or no, I apologize. He was a redshirt freshman in 2021, which means he would have been a redshirt sophomore in 2022, which means he has two years, two years remaining. Did I mess that up the other time too? No, I did not. So he has two. He also has two years remaining. Um, Devin Brown needs good protection when he starts this year. Listen, may, may the best quarterback win, but that's not where I'm leaning on on who I believe will be the starting quarterback. Um. So yeah, I feel I I believe Gangland uh, Byers is the one who visited this past weekend. Um, the only real downside whether you're talking about a johnny cornelius or jeremiah byers is that they are incredibly hot commodities right now you're going up against a lot of teams for you know the the rights the the to have the right of the benefit the privilege of having these guys come in from the transfer portal it's a lot of competition i think ohio state's in good position for both of them but you know, I'm also not writing this down in pen. I'm not I'm not adding him to the roster yet by any means. Uh, same with uh, Fentrell Cypress. I'm not adding him to the roster yet by any means. But when it comes to these three players, I think Ohio State's in really good shape. And in all honesty, if this was the entire haul out of the transfer portal this year, I'd be very happy. I, this yeah. you get you'd get two great tackles with experience with two years of eligibility re remaining and you'd get Cyprus who was, you know, despite the pack, despite the fact that he played for, for Virginia basically pulled all of the ACC awards at cornerback. He's probably in, if not, he's one of two of the best corners in all of the ACC this year. Mm -hmm. I want a DB or two. You know, as strange as it may sound, I still really like the young corners on this team. Um, a lot of guys got their first playing time this year. Um, so, of course, they didn't look great right away. I think there's some incredibly talented young corners on this team. If I had to choose between two cornerbacks and one, and a, a, I don't know how many scholarships Ohio State is expecting to still have, as we've not seen... Uh, heavy loss into the transfer portal, you know, cause Ohio state is still playing a, you know, a game at least that matters. And we haven't seen declarations for the NFL yet. Uh, aside from, you know, aside from one guy who's not going to be able to play in the bowl game. Um, so I don't know how many scholarships Ohio state is expecting to have left over for transfer portal, but if I had to choose, between two tackles and one corner or two corners and one tackle, I'm taking two tackles. 
Agreed. 100%. Because while Ohio State might have inexperience every time, not I don't I don't know I don't know about every time spikes, but in this situation, yes. Because I feel very good that Ohio State has young corners who are you know, we're we're put into some tough situations this year as young guys, but will be a lot better next year. But on the offensive tackle side, the trenches are always more important. <sighs> you know, you you can't you can't be bad at either. But you are right about one thing. It's a lot harder to hide, especially two bad off with one bad offensive tackle. You can kind of always put the tight end over there, but if both of your offensive tackles are bad, you're kind of screwed. Um, and there's a lot of things you can do to hide a bad corner. Um, unless you're going up against an elite offense that has like multiples, you know, two, three great wide receivers, then you're kind of, you're kind of fucked at that point. Um, yeah. And I'm just going to uh, throw out two names real quick. I have two additional names to look out for on the offensive tackle side of the ball. Uh, Walter Rouse just entered the transfer portal from Stanford. Logan Taylor, uh, offensive tackle from Virginia, also a recent addition to the transfer portal. Um, these guys are relatively new to the portal. I don't know a ton about them yet. I haven't done a ton of research on them yet, but they they do seem like guys... Um, you know, there's just like with regular recruiting, you sort of have your plan A guys, you have your plan B guys. And I think that we could add these two to the list of like plan B guys. Um, in addition to some of the names I mentioned last week. Yep. Okay, Kyle. Um, no, Kyle adding those to the show as well to the chat as well um stanford almost as bad as texas a&m at this point as yeah, far as Stanford's players entering the portal so many so many their whole their whole offensive lines is like gone yeah <laughs> it's they they yeah i don't it almost makes you feel like something else is going on at stanford beyond just their coach leaving yeah like, sure. I don't know what it is, but I feel like it's something else. And I, I have ideas about what that something else could be, but I'm not going to speculate because I don't know. And they're just, they would be at best educated guesses. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Anything else in the transfer portal you want to, you want to bring up? It's called the Pac-12 sucks, Zach says. I mean... Realistically speaking, where will the Pac-12 be in two years? Where will the Pac-12 be in two years? With the Big Ten. Not all of them. Not all of them, yeah. Um, not all of them. That's all. I think that's all I'm going to say about that. And the SEC, just the AAU schools. I mean, yeah. I mean, God, this is well treaded ter territory for us. You can go, um, you can go read, go listen to, go read. We don't write. You can go listen, go watch to uh, episode we did at the big uh, about the time that the Stanford God Stanford I've Stanford on the brain uh, USC UCLA news was released. I think we called it the Big Ten, or, or we called it like the Big Two, and then like two or revisited or something like that, right? So anyway, you can find it in our in our in our history. Um, but yeah, I. I think Ohio State takes at least four teams, at least four teams from the Pac-12 when it's all said and done. And it's going to be the I, best be teams. Yeah, I'd, I'd be fine if they took a couple from the uh, the ACC as well. That's step two, Kyle. That's step two. I, I know. And the, ACC's, right, Jared, I the ACC's time is also nearing an end what you have right now is like mutually assured destruction between the big 10 and the sec 
because like, you know, damn well, if the SEC reached out to Florida State and Clemson, that Florida State and Clemson would probably do it. The 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 issue there is that would start the crumbling, the absolute decimation of the ACC, which is essentially handing Notre Dame to the Big Ten. Mm hmm. So, I don't know. Anyway, different different topic for a different day. Um, Kyle, do you have uh, 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 t-shirt stores? I think you can still get it before Christmas. If you hurry, maybe the website will tell you if not. Um, 7071.thesloopcast.com and merch.thesloopcast.com. The merch has actual like Buckeye Sloopcast merch and the 7071 store has just like ohio based stuff it's not doesn't say sloopcast or anything on it it's just like celebration of ohio type merchandise um and there's also some pop culture stuff on there not necessarily re related to the state either it's just a place for me to upload stuff um and either one of those supports us equally financially you can also support us financially by going to the um, Patreon page, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Um, you can get ad free versions of this show, uh, the audio version of the show through Patreon and you get access to the premium sections of the discord server. Come my, my throat's starting to get sore. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? <laughs> uh, a lot, of, a lot of great games on Sunday, Jared, including a probably one of the best, the best uh, games of of soccer that I've I've ever seen. I don't know if you if you had a chance to watch the World Cup, Jared. No, I was busy sanding, which is probably one of the reasons why my 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 throat. Maybe I think I inhaled a little too much sawdust today. But but please, yeah, was, World Cup. Yeah, it was that, that was a great game with Argentina and France. That's going out going into extra time and then to penalty kicks. And yeah, it was. It's a lot of great back and forth there, and yeah, it was, it, it was just a shame that one of the teams had to lose there. It was such a great, great game, and and, a lot, and there's a lot of people comparing this to other professional sports, um, like championships. Like, is this was this better than some of the um, memorable notes for um, for like the um, the final four in college in college basketball or or a Super Bowl uh, game or a World Series game too. They're like comparing this as one of the best uh, uh, sporting events of all time. I, I don't know how you compare or cross sports. You know what I mean? You, like how, how you, do you? You really can't. You really can't. But how much excitement and drama that was happening in the game yeah it it had everything it was really really good yeah anything else in kyle's corner kyle uh Ohio state basketball should have should have could have beaten unc yeah really should have but they just kind of laid the egg there in that last six plus minutes and then just couldn't do any, couldn't finish it off in, in overtime too. It was just, it was, it was, it was tough to swallow there because they, they should have won that game, but, but they didn't. But they didn't. I mean, yeah. Ohio State failing to close out is a recurring theme over the past couple of years. Yep. It is. Yes. All right. That's uh, it. Oh, unless it's it. not. Okay. That's it. All right. Well, that's was, it. Was, <laughs> I, was going to, I was going to say, I was going to just say about the next couple of games here that Ohio State has here. So they do play this Wednesday, Jared, uh, against Maine. They should beat. <laughs> and then they have a week off and then they play Alabama A&M. And then they go straight into Big Ten play from there on uh, January 1st. So we get we get a couple of days almost in a row of, of Buckeye sports. They have Ohio State basketball on the 29th, then Ohio State football on the 31st, and then basketball again on the on the first. So a lot of Buckeye sporting events to watch. There you go. 
All right. N- now can I end it? Uh, yes. Yes, Jared, you can. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, tonight's ending music is brought to you by a band out of Dayton called uh, Abertooth Lincoln. Abertooth Lincoln. So uh, they're they're fun. They're a punk band. They're a little bit crazy, and you'll like it, or you won't. I don't know what you like. <laughs> Once again, their name's Abertooth Lincoln. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink. Lo- no, 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 no emo here. No emo here. More of a more more in the. Uh, in the hardcore emo split, they're on the hardcore side. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Abertooth Lincoln.